Hi everyone, welcome to this video on setting up a Windows scientific and deep learning environment from scratch. We want an environment that has all the prerequisites and a comfortable environment for doing uh, deep learning on Windows. Windows Terminal isn't the best, but recently Microsoft has released the Windows Terminal Preview, now known uh, as a replacement for the terminal, and this provides a very Linux-like environment that's very customizable. We'll be setting this up with the Cascadia font, setting up our uh, version control, some nice simple editors that you can use, um, and some basic software. Part 2 will include uh, tutorials on setting up Anaconda, and Part 3 will have a look at WinPython, uh, another Python distribution that I like using, uh, which is very good for setting up specific versions of TensorFlow and a drop-in or portable versions of scientific um, Python. All right, so one of the first things I like doing is to replace the terminal. And if you go to the Microsoft Store, you will see uh, and search for terminal, you'll see two options. Um, you can also install Ubuntu, which will, which will in fact install um, the relevant hooks into this terminal as well. So you end up having a, uh, a Linux kernel running within Windows, which is really cool. But for the most part, I use the terminal preview. And if you click and you'll install, I've already installed it. Um, and I've added it to the launch bar. And you can click on it and launch it. But before we do that, um, we'll need to configure it. And here I am launching it. And we'll see that there are some settings that you can do. And I've gone ahead and edited this. But let me do this again. So it's just a JSON file. Uh, I started with this IT editor. And you can install this, which is a nice editor. Just simply search CITE. Um, and it is a nice editor. It's tiny, or less than 2 megs. Uh, cross-platform um, and super fast. There are installers and standalone distributions for um, a number of operating systems and it's completely open source. And this is what it looks like. And I'm using it to edit this JSON file, uh, which is the settings. What I've done is I've added an entry here um, which comes from my gist. So I'll show you a gist that you can use from my GitHub. And if you go to the gists, you'll see the profiles.json file. And basically, I've copied one of these and I've put it in. And this requires the installation of this Cascadia code font, which I really like. And that's easy too. So you go to Google, you get all your, um, your search engine, Cascadia code onto Microsoft's GitHub page. You load that, the in releases. There's the release. Uh, you can download this and then install it. Um, so I have done that. So in downloads, um, we've got it in this folder, we've got OTF. You can highlight all of these, and you can right click, and then you can install. You can install for all users or install uh, just for yourself, and that'll get that set up. And so when you configure it, you'll have Cascadia code. Now this command line I've commented out, we can actually call the WinPython uh, executable that will launch the PowerShell with uh, the Python environment. But for the moment, we'll just use the PowerShell. And I've just added some font size and acrylic opacity just to make it uh, look cool. Now, the other thing that you will need is a unique uh, UUID or unique I user ID. And we can just grab one. I'll show you that all the way. And then there's the online UUID generator tool. You can copy one 
um, you can copy paste it in there um, and if you want that to be the default one launched there's a default option here you edit that out save it close it and if you close this editor it'll fire up in this mode which I had before but you'll see there were other ones as well which is the standard one you can see the fonts are a bit different um, well in this case it looks the same but as you will do other ones you'll see that they're not quite very nice looking so Cascadia code um, uh, makes a nice difference now um, having done that and we've done the UUID um, we've looked at the config uh, you can also install 7-zip and uh, I got the 64-bit version and install that and you can e extract uh, zip files and you can use 7-zip format as well which is a nice compact file we've installed Scintilla or Citee now you can also do notepad plus plus and for some of these labs um, these ones will be installed and it's a nice editor as well um, and it's also uh, a quite a nice editor not cross-platform um, which is why I don't use it but um, you're welcome to use it now we've done the Cascadia font uh, you can also do git for windows, you get windows, git um, you get the file and you run it and you can install that and what that will do is that if you go into a, a folder and if you right click you get these two options here and you can launch the git bash which is an msys terminal and you can use the standard linux interface but also you can launch git k which is a nice user interface i don't have a user i don't have a git repository here so we don't see anything but you can do all the standard git clone and etc commands directly uh, i prefer this um, to a gui it's a lot faster but if you do really want one there is also um, tortoise git Um, which is a nice user interface shell to get uh, but yeah that's up to you the last thing we want to do is we want to set up either anaconda python and uh, you can go to anaconda and you get the individual open source distribution and then you can download that or you can go win python and if you go into that you'll get an option to download one of those um, and we need to, and we'll, I'll, we'll have a video for this, how to select the correct version to match the, uh, the TensorFlow version that we will, will like to use. And we get all of these things bundled in. And the good thing about this is that it's, uh, it can be kept on a USB stick, carried around, and doesn't require installations. All right, and that covers it for this part one video. Part two, we'll have a look at Anaconda. Thanks.